right? And we are in uh, Acts chapter 67 today. It is a very long passage. This is a sermon given by Stephen uh, to defend his charge at the Sanhedrin. Why don't we ask the Lord to bless this time? Hey, Heavenly Father, as we turn to the Bible, we pray for a teachable heart and help the one to share and help those who listen. Lord, may we all be blessed by your word and reminded and encouraged by who you are. So bless this time and cleanse us so that we can be usable for you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's uh, turn to, let's go back to the sermon title. Who is who is a, a streamer of God of God? Because Stephen uh, sharing the gospel with uh, some Hellenistic Jews, uh, debating the, the Holy Spirit uh, strengthened him, and those so those people didn't win the argument and, and offended. They're angry, so they want to deal with this guy, take care of him, or get rid of him. So he make up, they make up false witnesses and uh, wrongly accuse him that he is a blasphemer of God. He attacked Moses and his law and the temple. As, as Jesus said, this temple will be destroyed in three days. Uh, I, will be, be, I will make a new temple. He was talking about his is dying for us and become a temple. Now in him, we worship God, not inside the temple, but in Christ. But they didn't understand it, but he was like trying to destroy the temple. Anyway, they were spiritually blinded. Uh, all these people opposed. God has a spiritual root, root problem, spiritual, not intellectual. Not that they don't understand, but they're not willing. They don't want to come into, come into God's light to be the right fellowship relationship with them, with God. So they some create many excuses and uh, um, to uh, kind of give themselves reason not to believe. And so they accuse Stephen. So they call him a blasphemer of God. So Stephen was a cow. I mean, was arrested and went to this. Jewish court, Sanhedrin, the high priest was there. What, what did you do? Did you say all this thing? So then we have the sermon. That's a long, long sermon from, from Genesis to all the way to David and then the, and the exile. He covered the whole Old Testament basically in one sermon. And uh, it's hard to preach. But anyway, we try to uh, uh, take a look at this passage and summarize it at least. So all right, hey, uh, Leslie, can you read this section for me? Now, Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed great wonders and signs among the people. Opposition arose, however, from members of the synagogue of the freemen, Jews of Cyrene and Alexandria, as well as the provinces of Cilicia and Asia, who began to argue with Stephen. But they could, could not stand up against the wisdom, the spirit, gave him as he spoke. Then they secretly persuaded some men to say, we have heard Stephan speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. So they stirred up the people and the elders and the teachers of the law. They seized Stephan and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They produced false witnesses who testified. This fellow never stopped speaking against the holy place and against the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs Moses handed down to us. All who were sitting in the Sanhedrin looked, looked intently at Stephan, and they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. All right. Uh, the name's Stephen. Actually, uh, you, you say right after the Greek words like Santa Stephan. Uh, means uh, crown. When you that who run, run this marathon, you 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 want you win, they give you a weave kind of like a headmaker kind of step step forms. There's a there's a crown 
when you win, give you a crown. That's basically his name. Uh, he probably a new believer or not too long. I mean, Jesus just uh, been uh, this is after Jesus' death, uh, a month, risen to heaven, like a month or so. It is not too far away. Uh, so at the most, become a Christian. Uh, he is a Jew, but also a Christian, become a Christian definitely through Jesus' ministry or the early church ministry. So young Christian, man, but he knows the Old Testament. You can tell from his sermon. He knows. He studied the Old Testament. And God used him. The Bible describes Stephen as filled with the Holy Spirit and with wisdom. And definitely very bold guy. He gave his life to Christ, testifying for Jesus. And um, so he was accused falsely to speak blasphemous words. Again, four things. God, God Moses, the the Mosaic law and the temple. So they didn't want to listen to his presentation. So they said, oh, use accuse. I mean, accuse him to uh, be uh, like uh, teaching errors and uh, speaking blasphemous words. I mean, uh, you, like Jesus said, I am the son of God. The, the the high priest said, tear his clothes off, right? That you offend the God. How, who are you to claim to be divine and deity? So they couldn't accept it. And, and, and Jesus' disciples, apostles, keep on preaching Jesus was the son of God and died for our sins and resurrected on the third day. And the worst thing, you guys killed him. <laughs> and it was like, ah. Doesn't take it too much. They're angry. Uh, and the Bible said Stephen's face was like a face of an angel in the midst of persecution and attacks. He had got that calmness and peace in Christ that no matter what, God is with him and he just testifying for God. You know, even his safety and life will be on the line later they maybe an hour later he was murdered okay next please wow then uh stephen made this uh sermon and this is the sermon of his life that's the last sermon and uh, he gave his life for the Lord. But he was uh, very elaborate. He, he used the old, whole Old Testament to prove to them this Nazarene Jesus Christ is not a cult. He is what the Old Testament points to. Moses points to him. He's the son of the, he's a descendant, one of the sons of David, who will be on the throne forever. And he talked about uh, Joseph, he talked about Abraham, he talked about uh, the whole Jewish history and the Bible and Old Testament to point to them that Jesus is not uh, erroneous, he's not just uh, some fantasy, he is the Messiah, Christ. Today you go to Israel, you said Messiah, but they understand. Uh, it, actually, that that's the uh, uh, the the word mean chosen by God, anointed by God. It's uh, like a spiritual leader, and even they have a sense of delivering from political or, 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 or oppression, like David. However. Jesus' primary primary task at that point was to deliver us from sin, and uh, then He will settle all the injustice when He returns the second time. Then He will be the judge. The first time He is the redeemer. So let's tackle a little uh, make kind of the main points of of His sermon. S Stephen believed in God, the God of glory, 
uh, the God who called Abraham and who is the father of Israel. So he is trying to defend himself that he's not uh, creating something uh, human, uh, not false teaching. He, he quote of Old Testament, the whole sermon. He back up that Jesus is the Messiah and we are in the line of Moses, Abraham, uh, Joseph, David, the whole, the prophets. This is the final revelation of God's redeem, redeeming plan. All the Old Testament, even the sacrificial system, pointing to him, this Messiah, who can save us. We turn to him and be saved. Don't be uh, don't your heart should not be hardened like all the Jews that rebel God in, in the history of this nation. So verse two, he replied, well, the high priest charged him, are this true? He said, brothers and fathers. So he said, I'm one of you. Listen to me. The glory of God. Probably referring to Psalm 29. In the whole chapter of Psalm 29, talk about God, who is the glorious God. He's the God of glory. The one and only almighty God. God called Abraham, our fathers, our father. And all of us are in the line of Abraham. I mean, the Jewish. So while he was in Mesopotamia, and, and he called, talked about his calling. Abraham was called by God in the midst of sin and rebellions. God chose Abraham to be his representative. Through his line, his descendant, he got wants to raise a group of godly people representing him and also help the whole na all the nations to come to him. That's the idea God chose Abraham to bless him, first of all, and also to make them a nation that's chosen by God to shine for God and to represent and be God's people in this earth. Most of them, most of the population on earth reject God. One of my best friends is a Japanese pastor. And he always uh, told me, oh, there's only like less than 1% or a very low percentage of Christian in Japan. So, so they have a tough job. Uh, in America, yeah, we have uh, more Christians. And uh, praise the Lord for that. But, uh, but we pray that we are uh, not just our Christian. Stephen's sermon. One of his points is it's not about a temple. It's not about a material. It's not about a location. It's not about whether you, your ancestors have the laws. It's about your heart. Your heart to worship God. You have everything. You have the temple. You have the law. You have Abraham as your father. But your heart is not right with God. It's not heart worship. Not genuine worship. Not spiritual worship. It doesn't do anything to us. If we just have an outward life of worship, of religious life. Religious, but not God. A lot of uh, vocabulary about religion, but a heart of far away from God. Stephen basically said, don't do that. That's not pleasing to God. So from Abraham, Isaac, and the circumcision, and then come to, and Jacob, Isaac, become, they gave birth to Jacob. Jacob become the father of what? The 12 tribes, right? 12 patriots. And uh, Stephen said, I am, I believe all this. I'm not making something new. Remember Genesis 12? God's promise to Abraham, your descendant will bless. Through your descendant, the whole world will be blessed. That's pointing, prophesizing about Jesus. Through Abraham, 
his singular, his seed, will bless the whole world. Gentiles too. And we are Gentiles and we become blessed by God through Jesus and through Abraham. If God didn't, didn't give them Isaac, <laughs> there will be love. There will be no uh, uh, Israelite. There's, and Jesus will not be born. I mean, it is God's redemption plan. So, and then he mentioned Joseph. Joseph sold as him as the brothers, the patriot that you guys respect. And they are not that godly. Either. They jealous of Joseph. They sold him as a slave. They actually wanted to kill him. But uh, one of the brothers said, I don't kill him. Just sell, sell him to, to, to be a slave. Uh, they wanted to kill him out of jealousy. So on one hand, he pulled all this Old Testament to back up that he is in the line of God's revelation. And on the other hand, point to the rebellions of the forefathers. There are good examples in Jewish, in the Israelites, godly people, but they are many ungodly people who rebellion rebel against God and with God's revelation in front of them and with the Bible Old Testament in front of them they chose to worship idols and refuse to walk with God. They are so close to God, God's thing, God's temple, or God's the tabernacle, God's leader, God's you know miracles. Every day they're eating miracle. They're eating in the desert. They're eating manna. That's a miracle. Their, their heart's so numb to, to God that they even they see miracle, they don't they refuse to walk with God. Uh, so his audience are High priest, high priest family, Sanhedrin, uh, Sadducees, um, and some other Jewish leaders. So they all know the Old Testament. But they're all religious. High priest, Sanhedrin. Can you be more religious than that? Right? The audience of religious, Jewish. Supposed to be believed, but no. Rejection of God and God's. Oh, sorry. I, I read for you. Rejection of God and God sends deliverers or messengers. Rejection has been the history of Israel. Like Joseph. Joseph was sent by God to save them from his family. But the brother rejected him, wanted to kill him. And he went through all the, the whole ordeal. Moses, prince of Egypt, right? He was, uh, God supernaturally saved him. And he was, the, the Pharaoh said, kill all the baby of Israel. They're getting stronger. Let's wipe, wipe them off. Because the, if you kill all the baby boy, right? A lot of the, the next generation will be cut off. There'll be a, no no a generation will be gone. That's why Moses. That's the time Moses was, was born, and the Pharaoh ordered to kill all the baby of of Jew, Jews. So mom wanted to save her him and put in a basket right and on the river, and uh, pick up by uh, the princess of Egypt, and uh, God put him in the palace. And train him with all the wisdom and knowledge. And uh, then God used him to become a leader to take the Israelite out of Egypt to the promised land. That's God's delivery for them. They were slaves, making bread with all straw. They were oppressed, murdered, humiliated, and, and, and uh, in a, the, the, the Bible said God heard their cries. Their injustice. They heard, 
God heard the cries, so they got sent Moses to, to help them. Remember Moses? Uh, maybe a little bit hot brother in the beginning. He saw some injustice. He what did he do? He killed that that uh, Egyptian, right? And to defend the, his brothers, um, and he bur buried him because this is serious stuff. But the, another day, he, this two Jewish guy are arguing. Moses tried to stop them. Hey, don't argue. You guys are brothers. Don't fight. Then the, the guy said, who are you to judge us? Are you, uh, who chose you to be the leader? You just, you want to kill me just like you killed that Egyptian a few days ago? Oh, someone saw it. So Moses escaped because he, he was a murderer. Even he, he, he was in the prison, in the palace. That's uh, serious stuff. You kill an Egyptian. So he, he, he escaped to the world, to the world for 40 years. And uh, so basically, Stephen said, Yeah, God sent Joseph. You guys, not everyone like him. Uh, God sent Moses. Uh, the, the brothers rejected him. And when he was leading the Israelite in the wilderness, did they hate him? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Even they saw all the miracles, the red, the padding of Red Sea, and all the miracles, they still grumble. They still hate. Say, oh, why you brought us here in the wilderness? No food, no water. I hate you. Let's go back to Egypt and enjoy our 7 uh, Eleven and all the Safeway. <laughs> All the good stuff there. Why you brought us here? They forget they were slaves. They were, they were bitten up. They were, you know, they under briefly. So it reveals their human nature. Many of us, even God, trying to reach out to us, we still run away. We don't want to approach God because that's the fallen nature of man and woman. It's just just inside of us. That's called simple nature. We just don't like God. We don't like Him. We want to run our life. We are God. We are the. We set our value. We pursue what we want to. We satisfy our flesh. Satisfies our desire. Don't bother me, God. Please. Next, please. Moses, verse 25, Moses thought that his own people would realize that God was using them, him to rescue them, but they did not. And verse 27, but the man who was mistreating the other pushed Moses aside and said, who made you ruler and judge over us? Are you thinking of killing me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? Verse 35, this is the same Moses that they had rejected with the word, who made you ruler and judge. So there are people who follow God's leader, but there are a lot who rejected him, especially. And after Moses went to Mount Sinai to receive the law, they what did they do? They said, oh, why? <laughs> Moses is God. Let's party. Let's do our thing and dance and, and uh, get, become chaotic. And they said, let's, Aaron, let's. They, they just don't know God, basically. Like, Let's be a, a golden calf and worship. They, maybe this golden calf can lead us to, to some blessing. Is there this Moses guy giving us all this trouble? Let's start a, something new with this golden calf. And uh, we'll, we'll do whatever we like. Don't listen to this Moses. See, that, that's their, their heart is not right with God. And Moses went up to the mount. And they start to worship idol. And that's revealed the nature of the human race. We just don't care about God. Next, please.
So Moses went up to the mountain and God gave him the law, Ten Commandments and, and his uh, teaching. And uh, Stephen said, that's the living words passed to us, onto us. It's living, it's dynamic. It's God's word, not man's word. <clears throat> God's word is a living, is living word. So, so don't think the Bible is dead and outdated, old-fashioned. It's still speaking to souls nowadays, right now, in this moment. People who open the Bible and read it, God speaks to us because that's his revelation. But it was hard enough, but our ancestors refused to obey him. Instead, they rejected him and in their hearts turned back to Egypt. Egypt is more attractive. Don't bother with Moses and God. Even God gave them a treaty, a covenant to call them, but they chose to go uh, ignore God and worship idols. And uh, then he quote the, the, this uh, passage from Amos 5, 25 to 27, um, talk about this, even the Israelite worship the sun and the moon and the stars and uh, their heart drift away from God. And not one generation, but many generations. But I know this is very long and this is uh, covers so many topics. However, there's some some there's a theme here. All right, God, the glorious God, who try to reach out to us to restore our relationship with Him. Who Abraham, God's salvation plan, already slowly revealed to us. In, in, instead of the pagans, God chose this group of people called Is for Abraham. They become Israelite. Give them the God's revelation, His words, and the worship system. Hopefully, there are people still worship God in this world. <laughs> you know, God created everyone, but how many percent worship God even nowadays? God wanted us to worship Him. That's the reason why we're here. We are here to worship God, to love Him and follow Him. And God, Moses, Abraham, Joseph, all these people is God's ways to reach out to us and call us back to Him. And the laws and the temple are just a vehicle. God using all these redemption uh, activities to draw us, draw our hearts and our life back to Him. Him, to walk with him, to know him, to feed him, to love him, to trust him. That's God's desire. And ultimately, God sent his only begotten son, and not just the prophets now, it's God himself, born as a baby, to be raised among the Jews, to tell them God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever love, whoso, whoever believe in him, will not perish, but an everlasting life. Jesus himself, God himself, ascended here, descended here, to reach out to us. And there's more, a bigger and revelation than Abraham, Moses, Joseph, the law of David, all this point to him. You guys missed it. He's the final revelation. Come embrace this Savior. He can save you. So Israelite received God's law, but not all of them obey and walk with God. See, they have the law the right now, the Old Testament, still read by the, the, the in the synagogue. They read it, but they refused. Jesus the Messiah is offensive to the Jews, most of them, that you talk about Jesus the third of them. They worship the they worship the ritual, the temple, the religious system is ever ultimately submissive to God and worshiping him. 
they have all these religious things going on. But they're blind. He's the, he's the high priest who ordered to murder Jesus. How spiritual they can be. They read the Old Testament and the Son of God standing right in front of him and said, I want to kill this guy. That's ultimate spiritual blindness. It's totally unacceptable. And we are like that. Without God's grace, we are so blind. So ignorant, spiritually dead. So they have everything, but they 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 are not with God, right? Uh, they are not right with God. That's the only thing they miss. All right, next please. All right, and then the final con uh, verdict of the sermon. Uh, quoting all this, God's uh, blessing to the Jews. And then here we go. It hit home. Verse 51. Leslie, can you read this section for me? Mm -hmm. You stiff-necked people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your ancestors did not persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. You who have received the law that was given through angels but have not obeyed it. All right. They, they, Stephen's kind of This is the verdict. Steve neck people is a, a God used this term to describe the Israelite in the desert in the wilderness. I'm fed up with you guys. You guys are stiff neck people. That means you are not obedient. You don't want to come to God. Even God draw you with love and providence and give them food, give them water, give them guidance. They hate God. The hearts and ears still uncircumcised. They were circumcised physically, but not spiritually. They don't care about who God is. They were circumcised people, but their heart is not circumcised. They're just like your ancestors, not just this generation, Pierce generation. It's been like that. That's the human nature. This talking about the chosen people. And not, then you can think about the pagans, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Canaanites, the cute baby, the incest. They have all kinds of pervert practice every day. And that's why God judged Cain with some fierce judgment because they wickedness, the wickedness of fan of God every day up to the point God said, that's it. And judge sin. It's not that God didn't want to reach out to human race, especially the Jews. But God, but they receive God and His Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your ancestors didn't persecute? Many, many prophets died by the people, by, uh, killed by the Israelites. Jeremiah, Isaiah, and many. Are the prophets murdered, and uh, they kill those pre predicted the Messiah to come, and all now they, the ultimate, they murder and betray Jesus, and you guys are guilty. You need to repent and come to God for forgiveness and a right relationship with God. Come to His grace. They have the law, but they didn't obey it. So what's the point of having the law about obey? You got you can have five Bible in the in your church, in your home, but you never read it and you never believe in it and you never obey God's word. This doesn't matter. If you have 50 Bibles, it doesn't matter. And this is also reflected in Jesus. I, Hot uh, when he was on earth. Uh, maybe, William, can you read this section for me? Jesus sorrow for Jerusalem. At that time, some Pharisees came to Jesus and said to him, Leave this place and go somewhere else. Harold wants to kill you. 
He replied, go tell that fox, I will keep on driving out demons and healing people today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I will reach my goal. In any case, I must press on today and tomorrow and the next day, for surely no prophet can die outside Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and stone birds sent to you, how often, how often I have longed to gather your children together and gather your children and your wings. And you will not, and you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Yeah, Jesus even wept uh, when he thought about this people uh, who God has been trying so hard to reach out to them. And he himself came to reach out to them if they wanted to kill him. And um, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who killed the prophet and stone those who sent to you. How often long to gather your children together. So it's God's will to gather every one of us, including the Israelites and the Gentiles. God is, that's God's heart to gather them. Like what? Like a mother, gather the children under her wing, her protection. Like if, if Leslie was a little kid, he tried to run to the to the to cross the, the, the road that might be danger. Dinah is gonna run to grab you and keep you out of trouble, right? That's that's God's heart. He wants to grab us out of trouble to save us from dangers. But we refuse. We say, ah, get out, don't don't grab me. I don't want you. I don't I like the I like freedom. I want to do whatever I like. And they get what they want. The house left to the desolate. And 70, 80, the, the Roman Empire wipe out the temple. No more. You don't, the, the Jews don't have a temple nowadays. No more. It, it, it's, just, it's just the wall that, and the left over. And the, all the stones were like demolished. Very sad history. But that's not just human, how we regret, how we treat God. And uh, next please. In the midst of the wall in, in Israelite, in Israel, uh, let's pray for them. And uh, in Revelation, Israel still exists. The end time before Jesus come. The, the nation Israel is here, still here. And many nations try to fight them, surround them. And that's uh, that's part of history. God will continue to deal with Israel. And because it, he has chosen them through Abraham, and God will not deny his promise. A promise is a promise, especially from God. God promised something, he will do it. But they have to turn to God. They have to accept the Messiah. You know, they have to come to Christ. And uh, some people believe that will be in the, in the, there'll be a big revival in the end that a lot of Jews will come to Jesus. Um, and we don't laugh at the Jews. We are the same. Actually, the Jews are more privileged. They have the Bible. They have the, all these prophets and ancestors. Uh, like Chinese, we worship idols since day one, and uh, we have been keep we keep worshiping idols. Uh, ben, we we talk about it like the Chinese like worship idols there, and then cause us uh, our, our nation to be so in the trouble. Uh, spiritually, there's a reason, and other reasons too. The spiritual, all the countries that worship idols, you can see there are a lot of trouble in those countries. Okay, Romans three nine. What shall we conclude then? Do we have any advantage, the Jews? Not at all, for we have already made that charge that Jews and Gentiles alike are all under the power of sin. As written, there's no one righteous, not even one, including me and you. There's no one who understands, there's no one who see God, all have turned away, and they have together become worthless in front of God's eyes. Worthless. 
useless. Useless. There's no one who does good, not even one. That's a bit of a wording of human nature. And we've fallen. We've corrupted. We hated God. We don't have anyone to do have, have anything to do with God. No one's righteous. No one understands God. Without God's grace, we're just spiritually dead. No one seeks God, you know. We, we encourage ourselves to do devotion. It's so hard because that's part of our nature. We don't want to be, be uh, uh, close to God. May God give us grace. It's all God's grace. Romans 3.22. The righteousness is given through faith. That's the Jesus' salvation plan. Through faith in what? In Jesus Christ. Not in the temple. Not in Moses. Not in Joseph. Not in David. But through faith in Jesus Christ, the one they cue to all who believe, that God gives them righteousness. That means you are, your offense to God are cleared up, are washed away, and you are right with God. That's called righteousness. There's no difference between the Jews and the Gentiles. For all have sinned, over all, every one of us. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You put God to shame. God created us, we live a life that's like a devil, that's put God to shame. And when all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ, and that's all we can get out of this trouble, is to receive freely this grace. We just saying amazing grace. This is free. This is given to us as a gift to those who have faith in Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. Not by word, not like Hindus, not not like other religion system. We work so hard, God will, will be so happy that He gave me uh, a key to heaven. No, God gave you a key to heaven if you believe what His Son has done for you and given to you free. Credit to your account if you accept Jesus. And uh, God presented. Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. So that's a precious, how precious this Savior in front of them that they just killed. Romans 3.28, for we maintain that a person is justified by faith apart from the work of the law. The law reveals our sinfulness but cannot save us because we fail to obey it. It's just but by Jesus' blood we are washed we cleanse, and the Holy Spirit now lives in us to empower us to obey God. That's the new way. That's the New Testament. Or in is God the law, the God of Jews only? And is He not a God of Gentiles too? Yes, Gentiles too. But there's only one God, and who justified the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through that same faith. Now both the Jews and Gentiles come to God salvation. Through only one name, Jesus Christ. No other name given to heaven, given to us under the heaven to be safe. Acts 4:10. The audience was Jewish, but notice you and all the is people of Israel. That's to the Jews today. This to them for them too. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucify and whom God raised from the dead. That this man stand before you heal the, the paralyzed guy who born paralyzed. Jesus is the stone you build a rejected, rejected by his people. And which has become the most precious stone, the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else. For there's no other name under heaven given to mankind, Jews and Gentiles, by which we must be saved. We pray for the Jewish people, my friend who are Jewish. Uh, I used to uh, volunteer with, with Jews for Jesus. Uh, we invite them here to share about the Sabbath, uh, the, about the Day of Atonement. Um, they are Jewish Christian, many of them, but not easy, not easy to help people to know, to know Christ. Uh, so pray for them. And also ourselves, we all like that. Everyone, Jews and Gentiles, has a spiritual sickness called sin. That's the root problem. 
he knows peace treaty can solve that problem. It's the hatred inside of our heart towards others, and it's the wickedness in our heart that uh, that bring us into many, many evil actions, failing to obey and love God. That's missing the target. Sins, Old Testament, New Testament, both means you shoot something and you miss the target. That's that's the word sin. Many words in old in the Old Testament and New Testament to 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 trans be translated sin, but they have all most of them have this meaning of missing the target. You didn't do what God wants us to do. We are spiritually blind, cannot and refuse to see God. The Jews, the high priests, the Sanhedrin, they read the Old Testament, they know about Moses, all these things. Blind. They don't see. They don't see God's sending someone to fulfill the Old Testament in front of them. Not that they, they don't register, that they refuse. Not that they don't understand Stephen. Not that they don't understand Jesus or Paul. They don't want to accept their heart of doctrine. Spiritual ignorance. Don't understand. You know, there, there are people who choose to believe falsely uh, in the internet and everywhere. Uh, they, they just like to enjoy uh, believing in lies for some reason. A spiritual bankruptcy, no, totally wicked. This is not, if it is not God's grace, all of us are totally spiritually bankrupt. We have nothing good to offer to God to please Him. If it is not God's work in our life, Holy Spirit's helping us. But, but, but more, to be bad, you have to respond to God. You cannot say, oh, I'm totally wicked. So, okay, it's all God's grace. I don't do nothing. I don't respond to God. You still need to respond. When God calls you to turn around, repent from sin, to stop something, and to do something, you have to do it. But we are totally wicked. And even to the point of spiritual death, separate from God, and no life, no God's life. It's just this physical body. That's another thing spiritual you know, inside of us. Now, Stephen pointed out that the Jewish people are like that, many of them. And I would say the Bible points out that we all like that. No one's righteous. We can be like them. If God performed miracles in front of our eyes, some of you grew up in church, you went to Sunday school, but there's a sin, there's a a disease in our spiritual life, in our heart, that kind of pull us away from God. And there's a spiritual battle until we arrive in heaven. That's something we go is is be going on, and we have to let the be the grace of God and help us and strengthen us to turn us back. And then the Bible said, "Die to your old self." Sometimes it's not us just playing with it. You have to put it to death. No more, Lord. No on the cross with you. Let me live as Jesus, as Jesus living inside of me. Help me to live with your power. Everyone needs God. That's the point. Receive his grace in Christ so you can be saved and healed from this spiritual sickness. That's the only one way to hope in salvation. And uh, Stephen offered to them, and Jesus offered to them, Paul offered to them. Um, they persecute them, they kill them. And uh, eventually the next chapter, after the murder, Stephen, the church started spread out. We need to run away for our life. Then we have to go to Samaria. And we have to go to the other city to escape from persecution. And along the path, they brought the gospel to the Samaritan, to other Gentiles. And that's how God used them. Oh, that's scary, but that's uh, kind of exciting too. But it, it just, uh, we're going to continue to read this and it'll be very, uh, it's an adventure that the apostle and gen uh, no, uh, disciples spread the gospel uh, during the persecution. Why don't we ask for the Lord's uh, blessing? Heavenly Father, we pray for our, our hearts and uh, 
We all like this. We all run away from God. With all your grace, we are nothing. We are meaningless and worthless. So God, create me a clean heart so I can know you. And give me a humble spirit so we can walk with you. Oh Lord, forgive all of our sins and our rebellions and our doubts and our second-guessing about who you are. Oh God, cleanse us. Revive, give us revival. May your love soften our heart. Thank you for the revelation in the Bible. And today we can see the whole picture in the Bible. So may your word be in our hearts so that we will treasure it and love it and obey you. So give us strength, Lord, in this stand time. We pray for Israel. We pray for the wall. We pray for all the innocent people suffering. Oh God, have mercy, have mercy, and bind Satan and his schemes. And do this end time, Lord. Reveal yourself and let your salvation be heard. And let your redemption be clear in this generation. We pray for all the Christians and all the churches in this world. Lord, equip us, help us to witness and shine for you in this dark time. We pray. All this in Jesus' name. So may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right.